Welcome to this UGC special lecture series. Today we will have a discussion on the subject astronomy and astrophysics which is being taught in most of the universities in the country and also in different research institutes where the work is going in the field. Uh, it is important to know about the basic tales of the subject which is known as astronomy and astrophysics. So, first of all we will like to know that what is basically the astronomy. Both the things uh, astronomy as well as astrophysics have a birth from the definition of the cosmology. Cosmology is a science which is used to study the nature, the description, the composition of various cosmos present in our universe. The cosmos can be in the form of our solar system, it can be as a galaxy, it can be as a sun, it can be as a star or it can be any astronomical object. So, in order to know the details of this cosmology, we come across the two basic definitions related with the subject that is astronomy and astrophysics. Astronomy is the oldest observational science which is used to study the physical nature and the composition of the universe and everything which it contains. As we know the universe contains galaxies, the universe contains our solar system, the universe contains billions and billions of stars. So, therefore, we have a tool based in the science of the cosmology which are used to study the composition and the nature. Then what is astrophysics? Astrophysics is a branch of science that deals the physical laws that govern the structure and behavior of the various astronomical objects. It emphasizes the physical and chemical processes that are going in various astronomical objects such as birth and evolution of an object like the birth and the evolution of a galaxy, the birth and the evolution of a star or the birth and the evolution of a solar system or in general we can say that the birth and the evolution of the whole universe. So, we have a very clear distinguish between the two branches the astronomy and the astrophysics. We can also add here one more important description that astronomy we do purely on the basis of observations and in astrophysics we use various physical laws to construct various theoretical models so that we are able to study the various evolutions, the or origin or the other related parameters which can be in general compared with various observational results coming from the field of astronomy. If we go for studying the origin of universe, as we know that from the very earlier times even different scientists have been coming with different kind of models to study or to give some kind of a description for the origin of our universe. We have a number of models available with us, but everyone is very much aware with a model which is known as Big Bang model. because Big Bang theory is the most accepted model as it is helpful in explaining and clarifying various things, various uh, results that have been coming from right from the creation up to now for the origin or we can say that for the evolution of the universe. Now, Big Bang model where from it comes? we know a big bang which is an event basically has taken place before 
10 to 15,000 million years ago with an event where there was a sudden explosion of a system and with the explosion the universe got slowly created in the form of so many things. Right from the Big Bang, we have been taking very much care about the two very important concepts that is matter and energy. Because this matter and energy which is right now available with us has a birth right from the Big Bang. So, when the Big Bang has taken place, the matter and energy, the two related concepts got created simultaneously. We always say that we have the very, very big systems in the universe and these big systems, we name them as galaxies. So, therefore, this matter can exist or have been existing in the form of a number and number and number of galaxies. But at the same time, a very important thing which we have already discussed here that is energy is very much related with this matter. So, the two things the matter and the radiation have a very much related origin from the Big Bang. But in addition to that, we have come to know that Big Bang successfully explains two more important concepts that is the space and time. Therefore, we have the very important four concepts the matter, the energy, the space and the time which have been created or which have come into action right from the origin of the universe or we can say that right from the big bang of the universe. So, the matter, the energy, the space and time have played an important role in the formation of so many astronomical objects which have constituted the man universe. As we know that when we talk about the galaxies, if we look for a particular galaxy, a single galaxy is supposed to be made up of so many things. We have the first part that is star. We have a number of stars in a galaxy. Then we have the interstellar medium which is basically the combination of gas and dust and then we have the magnetic field that is existing there and then we have the cosmic rays which are present in a galaxy and then we have some matter which we called as unseen matter. Why I use here a word unseen because this is the matter which has been postulated from time to time, but not detected yet from the observational point of view. Therefore, these galaxies are the major building blocks of the universe. So, if we have a very some or we can say that if we have some very much details, a number of details available for the various galaxies we can say that we can study the origin of the universe or the evolution of the universe by taking a number of galaxies into consideration. These galaxies which are grouped in a different ways. We have nowadays in the, uh, in, in the age of modern technology, we have so many tools available. If we go just before some time, Edwin Hubble, a very famous astronomer, not only an astronomer, he had designed himself from engineering point of view a telescope that is known as Hubble Space Telescope. On the basis of the various observations recorded by Hubble Space Telescope, we have a number of galaxies 
existing in different ways in different forms and the information have given us the result that the galaxies exist in different type like we have a spiral group of galaxies and we have an elliptical group of galaxies and one more type we have an irregular number of galaxies spiral galaxies we know that a galaxy has different uh, definitely a spiral type our milky way mean is the observational part of universe is a spiral galaxy then the number of galaxies do exist there in different ways in different forms now the scientists have cataloged these galaxies into different numbers for example we will be t we will be talking about ngc 41 so ngc means actually the new galaxy catalog so so these galaxies have been cataloged on the basis of their type on the basis of their shape and on the basis of their other parameters elliptical galaxies do exist in different ways if we talk about the elliptical galaxies it is just like a the shape of various elliptical galaxies is just like a tunic fork diagram so starting from the e0 group of galaxies and then e1 group of galaxies the e2 group of galaxies and so on continuing up to e6 group of galaxies so means that we have a number of we have a larger and larger eccentricities available with such kind of formations also as the third group i have mentioned that we have some irregular group of galaxies they don't have any regular shape they don't have any regular pattern that is why we name them as irregular group of galaxies now when we talk about the evolution of a galaxies because in the field of astronomy and astrophysics the evolution of a system is very much important as i have said that the evolution of the universe is itself a very important challenge and the people have been definitely doing a lot of exercise on this evolution of this universe so as a single object means for a single galaxy when we look for its evolution we believe on a number of hypotheses which have been predicted from time to time by different scientists and believing on the one one simple hypothesis that nebular hypothesis basically this nebular hypothesis was given by the two scientists named as laplace and kant who say that the system gets evolved on the basis of the result coming from a nebula basically a nebula is a cloud of gas and dust so from this cloud of gas and dust some kind of system gets evolved which has its own formation and many things many objects do exist or get formed from that nebula so a very simple concept that nebular hypothesis has been successfully explaining the formation of various astronomical objects like we say that everyone in this universe has a birth and then has a death similarly our galaxies have got birth and with the passage of time new new galaxies go on adding to a general classification of galaxies so we can say that our galaxies have a birth and remain for a pretty pretty long time and then ultimately has a death also but at the same time new kind of galaxies go on adding to the system when we talk about the observational part of the universe like the milky way galaxy 
as I have already told that the Milky Way galaxy is a spiral type galaxy and a very important system which is very important from astronomical point of view that is the solar system. So, where do this solar system exist in our Milky Way galaxy? Basically, a number of theories have been again put forth there for this solar system. Generally, we believe that the solar system is lying at a distance of 10 to 15 kilo per sec from the center of the Milky Way galaxy. I have used it here kilo per sec as we know that this per sec is an astronomical unit because the distances are so and so large that we cannot count them in kilometers or in some other unit. So, we use a light year or we use per sec. So, that is why we say that the solar system is at a distance of 10 to 15 kilo per sec. Now, when we look on this solar system, what basically it is, what composition it has, what size it has, what origin it has. So, so many things again come to our knowledge which help us definitely to know about the various details about the solar system. Again, as far as the origin of the solar system is concerned, we again go to the same hypothesis that is a nebular hypothesis. Means that the solar system might have got birth from some exploding kind of a star and took the formation of the system which we called as a solar system with the maximum and maximum mass lying at the center of the system and the number of constituent particles rotating and revolving around this maximum mass. Then we say that this maximum mass where the maximum weight is or maximum we have which is the center of mass basically of the system is the sun. So, the sun along with its other planets constitute the solar system. If we say what about the size? Basically, the solar system has a size which extended to a number of light years like this. Uh, we have a very good classification of the solar system starting from the sun, then we have Mercury, the Venus, the Earth, the Mars, the Jupiter. Not only these planets, we have the other objects which are there. The other we can say that the bodies which are there like asteroids, the comets, these asteroids which are the part existing in between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter and also that the uh, these, these, these comets, the meteors, the meteorites which basically come from the interplanetary space and have a travel or has a passage uh, through the atmosphere and sometimes even strikes on the surface of earth. The comets are there, a comet belt is there. It has been observed that the comets are coming from a distance of about 20,000 light years. So, lot of many many objects are existing in the solar system. So, the two parts are there basically, the two sections are there for a solar system. The first we called as the internal section or the internal structure and the second one we called as the outer structure. The first four planets that is Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars we call them as terrestrial planets and the rest of the planets we call them as giant planets. If we compare the various physical properties of various planets, they differ in so many ways. They differ in brightness, they differ in 
magnetic field they differ in their orbital period because if we go to the farthest planet it is situated at a far off distance from the center of the solar system means from the sun and if we talk about the very first planet that is mercury it is very much near to the sun and we know we should also know that the first two planets that is mercury and venus are called as morning and evening stars because these two planets are usually seen in tv light hours because of the tremendous kind of the light means heat and other things coming from the sun so the structure of the solar system is a very simple the sun along with its planets along with the moons along with the asteroids along with the comets and along with the other objects constitute the structure of the solar system the properties as i have already told you they differ in so many ways if we talk about the magnetic field the magnetic field of the jupiter is the largest one and the saturn and then the uranus and then the neptune slowly decays as we can say that the magnetic field of these various planets which extended to the so many dimensions up to magnetospheres can have a very simple kind of structure generally in the form of the solar wind coming from the sun the axis of rotation where we say that the planet rotates about its own axis and the uh, magnetic field lines therefore we come here to the important central part that is sun everybody knows that sun is an important star sun is an important object which has been able or which is responsible to flourish the life on the planet as earth sun gives us everything sun gives us heat sun gives us light so without sun perhaps we cannot say that existence of life is possible we also say that our sun is a reference star when we talk about the sun when we talk about the evolution of the sun when we talk about the origin of the sun again we go to the same hypothesis that the formation of sun within the solar system has been from a nebula because everything which has come into the real picture has got the birth from the clouds of gas and dust so as far as the age of the sun is concerned nowadays we have the number of theories we have the number of observational results which have helped us in one way or the other way that the age of the sun is up to now 4.6 billion years and more and more age has to come for the sun if we talk about the age then we can at the same time say that what the age about the whole solar system when sun has an age of 4.6 billion years then the system itself has an age of 4.6 billion years so sun is basically a star as far as its evolution is concerned it has a different evolution this evolution goes in so many ways this evolution goes in so many stages first of all we will talk about the first evolution means that before a star or before a sun has born so we have a pre evolution which we call that as pre man evolution or we can say that an object which has a tendency to grow an object which has a tendency to get birth 
so there is some kind of phenomena which is responsible or which is itself making some kind of uh, mechanism so that the formation of object takes place we call a star as a proto star once the star gets born we call it as a proto star basically our sun as i have already told you that it is a star but it is a different star when we look about the classification of where stars the stars can be classified on the basis of their luminosity on the basis of their brightness on the basis of their increasing and decreasing temperatures and on the basis of some other related parameters we have a number of classifications available and and we say that we have particular classification if we have a particular classification we call it as a cluster so we can have here a cluster of star then the cluster of next star then the cluster of third star basically grouping we can also say that if we have a hundred group of stars we name it one cluster if we have a group of more than 200 stars we name it other cluster for reference we can say that we have a globular clusters we have galactic clusters so number of number of clusters do exist and we can also say that these clusters are the group of various clusters basically constitutes our galaxy so it is just like an hierarchy process a first star combined with a second star combined with the third star goes on adding to a multiple number of stars and forms a cluster similarly when we talk about uh, the groups our galaxies exist in the form of clusters the globular clusters the galactic clusters same what i have already talked in terms of the star cluster since we are running short of time therefore the rest part of this lecture will be discussed at the next time till then goodbye